Okay, everyone. Now, for those of you who are new how to ask your questions, you would just either type your questions in the question box or you can raise your hand using the hand icon and then I will unmute you. And we'd always rather have you do it that way because it's much easier if Joe has a question for your question. It just goes a lot smoother. So without further ado, let's get started. Here's Joe. Okay. All right. So um, first thing we're going to do here is uh, we're going to Courtney, you've already gone through all the rules, right? Because I was working with that commercial customer coming in. So you've already gone through all the rules? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go over a deal with you. Um, these are not the exact numbers on the deals. As a matter of fact, I think there might be somebody here who will recognize this picture uh, of this one house, but it's close to the numbers of a deal I was describing for someone who's in uh, Jumpstart but not for your success yet. And uh, her and her husband, just they're, they've been afraid of different information marketers and spending money and making mistakes and all. So they want to go into force your success, but they're a little bit apprehensive right now. So um, I'm going to use this deal uh, and, and break it down for you and give you a good idea of what you should be looking for. And uh, it's a very small, simple deal, but um, I, think you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. So, Courtney, I might have to have some of this stuff removed from my screen when I go forward on this. So let me just see. <clears throat> yeah, let's see here. Hopefully I won't turn this webinar off. And that, okay, I think I'm good. All right, so you, you don't have to come back to St. Thomas again, Courtney, you can stay in Georgia. <laughs> okay, guys, so, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off talking about this one particular deal. And like I said, this is not the exact numbers on the deal. The, the, the exact numbers on this deal are higher than what I'm about to show you, but um, it, it really helps break down and helps people kind of understand what they should be doing once they know how, what they should be focused on. Okay, so um, the first thing I've got to do is I, I've got people who have the engineering mindset, the, you know, let me cross every T and dot every I and let me run it all the way down to the, uh, the penny. So, so the first thing I want you to realize is in, in structuring this common type deal here that happens all the time, whether it's a um, uh, $45,000 deal or it's a $450,000 deal or if it's a $4.5 million deal, the basic process is still the same just some have a little more zeros attached to the end but I do understand we all understand that there's some additional costs that are not going to be identified in the layout of this just for the ease of numbers we're not going to go into all of that there's going to be some minor TLC that could uh, be necessary tender love and care maybe a little sprucing up maybe a couple hundred dollars here or there spent for that uh, there's going to be some closing costs. Now, the closing costs on these types of deals um, would would be like this. If I, um, matter of fact, one of my buyers just left just a little while ago. Uh, she bought a house. It's a 200 and I think it's about $285,000. And her total closing costs were 1000 and I think it was 1043 because I just did a whole bunch of closings um, uh, gosh, that was last week now. I thought it was this week, but it was last week. But it was 1043 That's her total closing costs with everything. So these, these kind of deals have very small closing costs. In a, a $45,000 deal, you're probably looking at maybe six or 800 bucks at the most. Um, there could be some missed or late payments. Now, that's where the money lies. That's where we're going to make money if that occurs. All right, and people look at it and go, wait a minute, no, Joe. If there's a missed payment or late payments, uh, we're losing money. No, we're going to make a lot of money. We're going to make tens of thousands of dollars off of that right there. And you'll see why uh, in a short while. And there's, there's a whole lot more, but I just want to make sure that we know that there are costs that will be incurred. So if I were to add all of that together, maybe I'll um, have, you know, 500 to $3,000 in costs in this typical deal here that someone else has already paid for me up front before they even occurred, if they occur. Okay, enough of that. Let's move forward on to uh, this deal. Okay, so I wonder if Chris would recognize that house. Anyhow, all right, so let's talk about this. So I'm the investor, or you're the investor, and 
you're buying this property. So I'm buying this property. Uh, the sales price and the terms on a deal like this. Now this particular deal was a seller finance deal, but this is the size and type house that fits the numbers that I'm about to show you. So these are not the exact numbers for that deal, so don't get all crazy on me, Chris. All right, so um, a subject to purchase of $43,000 of the first. So the first mortgage has a $43,000 debt. So the seller owes $43,000 to, let's just say, um, Bank of um, Wisconsin. All right, so that's their first mortgage. Now, why will the seller sell this to us for what they owe on it? Various reasons. Um, there's times where they may need to just get out from underneath the debt. They may uh, have a job offer somewhere else and they don't wanna leave the house to a, a, a rental management company. They don't wanna rent it out and have tenants destroy their property. Um, they want somebody who's gonna come in, take over the property and be responsible for it and be sure that their credit's not gonna be affected by their mortgage payment not being made. They may not be able to afford two house payments, one where they're moving to and this one here. And so when we step in, we take over um, this, this deal and make the payments for them. So the principal interest taxes and insurance on a deal like this is about $600 per month on this, just this simple little house. All right, number of years left on that mortgage. Um, the, the, the time is really important to know this is just a example deal. So if I, if I knew that I only had 22 years, let's just say left on this mortgage, then I can show the buyer how my end buyer, how they're gonna save a whole bunch of money by buying this through me for more than what the house is worth in the traditional world. They're gonna be able to buy it cheaper even though they're spending more than what it's worth in the tr traditional world. And, that, and the reason is they're not gonna have all the interest that's required to be paid on a brand new loan of 30, you know, with a, like a 30 year mortgage on it. Okay, so let's move forward. Okay, so now that was me acquiring the property, doing a, a, a subject to purchase on it. Now the next piece of this is we've got the end buyer, the lease purchase end buyer. So they are coming to me typically and they're gonna give me 65 grand uh, on this, on paper. Now they're not handing me $65,000 yet, but if they are, then you know, then the whole deal's done and over with and I didn't make much money off of it. That's kind of like a foolish thing for anybody to do, but you know, there's people that do that. Um, but anyway, so the, uh, so the sales price, 65,000, my lease purchase and buyer comes into my world pays me in this example eight grand down and pays me a monthly lease payment of a thousand dollars per month so in this particular case what i've done is i've designed this in such a way that it's i'm only paying forty three thousand for it total is eight thousand dollars down enough for me to be satisfied to convert the deed and the answer is with my dream team in place i have no problem whatsoever with only getting eight down operating in Georgia with this deal. So you might need a little bit more down or it might be okay for a little bit less down, but I still want my lease purchase and buyer to jump through some hoops. So in this case, instead of me asking them to add a little bit more to the down payment before I convert the deed, I'm telling them I'm going to accept payments from you for one year, make them on time or early not late. If they're late, we're going to extend that period of time. So there's where you get the missed or late payments where you start making more money. So you'll see what that means a little bit more in the future. Okay, so for one year, I want those those payments of $1,000 a month coming to me. Now, right away, my positive cash flow is $400 a month. If the place costs me $600, i am receiving 1000 So the difference there is $400 that goes in hip pocket National Bank. Okay, so is any of that $1,000 a month going towards um, the purchase price or coming off the principal? And the answer is usually not. Almost never do I allow any of that, but I do make it possible for them to pay above the thousand, anything they pay above that $1,000. So let's say if they pay $1,100, that means another $100 went towards their down payment. So they gave me 8,000 upfront, 
Next month, they give me 1100 for the payment, and there's 100 in there that goes toward the down. Now they've got $8,100 towards their down. Okay, so that, that down payment comes right off the total purchase price. It would come right off that 65000 that they would be buying it from before. Okay, so after one year, if they've done everything I've told them to do, paid on time or early, then I'm going to convert the deed. Okay, so now the next piece of this is, so far, I have received $350 a month, but not in my pocket. It's built into the deal because I'm just going to use the basic number. Now, I know that that number changes a little bit every single month in the principal that's owed on the first mortgage that I took over of the seller. So that seller's first mortgage went from – at using a, a, the, um, the number of 350 principal per month that's being paid down on the $600 that's coming and going towards that, that seller's mortgage. So that's my money that's growing in this deal. So $350 every month out of that 600 is going towards principal. So that means instead of me owing 43,000 that I took over one year later, I owe, um, uh, 38,800. So instead of it being 43,000, $4,200 worth of principal pay down during that one year with that other 600 that's coming to me also is paying down on what I owe. It is not paying down on what my lease purchase end buyer owes yet. They're still just leasing. Okay. So now my end buyer, let's just go down the, the road of they're able to borrow $57,000 from the bank. Now remember, my sales price to them was 65,000. They gave me 8 grand down. So right here, the balance that they still owe on this deal is 57,000. We still have a debt of 38,800 to take care of. So now we got the 57,000 that they're able to borrow from the bank. So let's go to see how that plays out. So we got the 8 grand down. We got $4,800 of positive cash flow that goes in Hip Pocket National Bank. We got $4,200 pay down on the principal of the debt, that first mortgage that we took over, which dropped it to we only owe 38.8 instead of 43. And so the difference between that now is $14,000. Okay, so when you look at this 47,000, or I'm sorry, 57,000 minus the 38.8, basically what we're telling you is, there's still 14 owed to us, 14,000 owed, but we also took into consideration the 4,200 that that um, 43,000 has dropped to the 38,8. So basically, when you take that and put it all together, in this example right here, I've made $31,000 off of that deal. Not bad for you know just a small, simple house like that. Okay. Now the next piece of this is what if they we're only able to borrow 45,000 instead of 57,000. Okay, so you can kind of look at it from this perspective. Now, the investor would do a seller carryback second mortgage for $12,000. So, what's the why 12,000? If they still owed us 57 and they are only able to borrow 45, then the difference between the 57 and the 45 is $12,000. So, I do a seller carryback second for $12,000 at, let's just say, 7% interest for eight years, the interest that I receive off of that, along with the $12,000 of principal, is $3,706.04. I want my four cents. Okay, so their monthly principal and interest payment now would be $163.60. So your accountant, you know, crediting that. Now, you can change what their monthly payment to you is if you want to, to drop down to that. It doesn't matter. But... When we get done with this whole thing, if they were only able to borrow 45000 a year later, then we've made $34,706.04. Okay, so now, that's a pretty good investment. That's decent money, but that's not where the real money is in this kind of a deal. So the real money has not shown up in anything I've told you thus far. So I'm going to take you into a different world just for a second. 
we're going to become, matter of fact, I think I've seen that Meredith is on this, this call here. So Meredith is a real estate investor and she's also a realtor. Lee might be on here too. He's also a realtor. By the way, Lee is also a, a, um, a business broker. So if you're ever interested in buying or selling a business, Lee is your guy to contact for that. Okay, so back to the realtor world. How does a realtor stay um, in the front of their customer's mind when their deal is done, when they've already finished the deal? And there's several different ways. You know, you could just send them an, a nice little note every once in a great while. Maybe you could get a, um, a magnetic um, saw emblem that goes on their uh, refrigerator door. Uh, so it's, they always can see your number right there on their refrigerator door. Uh, maybe it's, um, you know, giving them Christmas card, birthday card, uh, that kind of thing. Maybe just dropping by, you know, uh, once every couple of three months or once or twice a year with maybe a little housewarming thing or, or something. You know, you can try to keep yourself, and it's really, really difficult to keep yourself in the front of their mind a few years down the road when they decide to do something different than what they've already done with this house. So. When you have those 96 months worth of payments, every single month, you're in their mind. You are automatically in their mind because they're making a payment to you. And anything that they want to do basically has you involved in it, whether they're paying off what they owe you or what have you, because you've got a lien on the property. They're making payments through you or to you. Um, when I do a, a seller carryback second, it depends on the situation, but a lot of times I'll do it on a wrap so that they pay me for my second payment, plus they pay me for what their new first is. Remember, they borrowed 45000 and so then I'm making the payment on their 45000 that they borrowed. When I do it on a wrap, that way I can't get wiped out of this deal without me knowing what's going on right in the very beginning, and I can uh, do things to stop it from taking place if I need to. All right, so... I'm staying in the deal. Now, the other thing that you can do, which is not very profitable at all, but you can, if all of a sudden you needed some cash, you can take this note that you have in place and you can sell it off to um, you know, a note buyer for a, a percentage or a piece of what um, that the face value of that note is. And the face value is $15,706.04. But anyhow, so the real money is sitting there where they're constantly reminded about you every single month for the next eight years. Now, most people, most of the time, within one to three years, maybe two to five years, are going to be transit. They're going to move. They're going to change their mind. They're going to upsize, downsize. Uh, whatever the case may be, something's going to change in their life to where they may want to um, get released from this deal. Once you're involved with them and you're involved with them for eight years after the deed is converted, that doesn't mean that you can't just ease, make it very easy to take this property back over from them. Uh, one of the ways that you can do it is a deed in lieu of debt on your second and a subject to purchase of on their first. So it can just easily transfer and you can pay the closing costs. I mean, it's, it's going to be less than a thousand dollars. What are you going to get out of it? You've already got 34 grand out of it or a piece of the 34 grand out of it. So you can, you can play with this uh, all different ways and stay in the deal. So that's where your real money is made by staying in the deal after the deal is done. Okay. All right. If they miss payments or they're late on payments, are you going to go ahead and convert the deed anyway after 12 months? And the answer is absolutely not. They've got to follow through and do what you agreed with them and they agree with you that they're going to do these certain things before you'll transfer that deed. So every month that goes beyond or every year that goes beyond uh, where they're still just leasing it, you're making a lot more off of it. But each time you take this property back, more and more of the debt that you were responsible for, that you took over that first mortgage of the original seller's mortgage, every bit of that is being paid down and paid off while you're staying in the middle making money off of it and not owing pretty much anything shortly down the road on this property. Now, one last thing that you can do, depending on how disciplined you are and how organized you are, you might be able to take 
parts of the money that you're making off this and pay the principal off faster on this deal using the deal to pay it down faster now the only thing I want you to do is not make yourself cash poor and pay this off but have no money at all to handle it in the event that your buyer all of a sudden moves out in the middle of the night and you got to make the payment and you got maybe you know a thousand dollars worth of cleanup to do to the property so you have to kind of um, you know do it in a, in a sensible way that where you you hold on to some and you use some to pay down and you're in good shape now if you got multiple properties then you know you're in better shape to pay this off quicker okay so my best kept secret on this whole thing is you saw that I described to you how I buy the property and I described to you how I sell the property but the bottom line is that I do it in the reverse. I have it sold before I buy it. So before I'm committing to this property or buying this property, it's already sold. Buyers have already paid me up front that 8,000 down. They've paid me more than likely that thousand dollars for the first month before I actually commit to this deal with the seller. And remember, I'm taking it over subject to in that example. That's a very common thing. It's a very common thing that we do out of you know 10 or 20 people that come to us through the marketing that we do. Um, I'll probably do maybe one to five of those kind of deals on that. All right, so 95% of the time, this is what I'm doing right here on those simple little deals, okay? Okay. This is what you need to learn. You need to learn how to market to get the right people telling you that they've got that kind of situation based on this one simple little technique. There's all different kinds of techniques that we do and I show you how to do just in Jumpstart. But you gotta understand how to market to get that type of motivated seller contacting you you got to understand how to structure that deal and you got to understand how to negotiate that deal. So negotiating would come before you're structuring, but the bottom line is marketing to get them in, negotiating it outright, and then go ahead and structure it so that you can tell whoever else is involved uh, what it is you need them to draw up. That, that's where you know our attorneys come into play, where I show them in the structure of exactly how I want them to draw this deal up. Okay, so, um, a deal like that, a typical deal like that, I'll probably get back maybe, I'd say maybe three to six times over maybe six or seven years. All right, so just keep that in mind. Every time I get another down payment, um, I owe that much less on that monthly payment because I'm paying down that much on that principal each and every time. Um, Eventually, nothing is owed on the property, and now all I have is just taxes and insurance to worry about on the property while they're um, in it paying me a thousand or more a month on it. Okay, so if you're not already in Force Your Success, I know some of you on the call are, and some of you are just in in Jumpstart. Some of you are um, have started part way with Force Your Success. And so I do a little bit of things for you, but I don't really push you hard because you haven't signed up for the full Force of Success program. As soon as you can, you need to get into Force of Success. Now, the, the cost has gone up now. Um, it used to be $15,000. Um, I discounted it during um, you know, the, the holidays. We gave a little discount. And so now you know, I'm getting really busy with a lot of the students that are in the full-blown force of success. So I need to get those students successful and then get more students coming into that program once I've satisfied the ones that are in there or if they want to sign up again, they can certainly sign up again and we'll do it all over again for them. Um, but the new price now for force of success is 19000 and so you can just kind of think about what you got it for and what they're paying. And honest to God, I, there's nobody in Force Your Success that hasn't made way more than twice the 19,000 versus the small amount who are in the full-blown Force Your Success and doing what we tell them to do. So um, there's that part of it. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna open up for Q&A. The Q&A is about what issues you're having or questions about the deal that I just structured for you. So Courtney, oh, you know what, Courtney, uh, wait a minute, one, one thing I had, a, um, one of the, 
I need you to make sure that, uh, let's see, this is one o'clock, so we'll probably be done with this by maybe two, two or two thirty. Let's let's give us some fudge time there. I need you to call Joanna in Canada. Go ahead and get her on the phone, set up a phone call where she's calling me at 3.15 today. All right, so. Um, okay, um, why though? Oh, oh, okay. Remember, Joanne is the one that has the that one house in Statesboro. That that Joanne, I know we got a couple of Joannas. But um, that one there, remember, we've got buyers lined up for that one now. So I know need to go ahead and finalize the deal with her as the seller. So um, go ahead and get her on the phone for me at 3.15, okay? All righty. All right, and I don't know if you're going to email her or what. I mean, you could, maybe that'll work, you know, uh, whichever way you want to communicate with her. But if you can shoot that while we're still uh, doing this too. And then also one other thing, uh, is Lee Grider on this webinar? Do you know on your list? Um, yes, he is. Okay. He's on right. there. Okay, so um, Lee, I need you to drop by if you can this afternoon. Um, to sign the contract on that residential turning in commercial deal. I need you to go ahead and stop by today so we can go over that and get that all signed. And, and by the way, here's a surprise for you. The first part is already done for you. Uh, I've already made you 127000 off that with the new buyer uh, who is willing to go into that place and then be relocated with the house off of that property. So it's great to be in Porsche success, isn't it, Lee? <laughs> okay. So, um, Let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A. Okay, all right. Nitya asked, how often do customers for one of your book or training email list turn into a buyer or seller in your investing business? Okay, she, okay. she's asking about my books on the training side. How many of them turn into a buyer of my real estate deals or buyer of my real estate training program? He said it's a he and I, I'm, oh, not, I'm, I'm not really sure. Nick, can you answer that in the, or in the questions? Real estate deals. Okay, so, so how, the, let me see if I understand. The question is how often from my book deals do my um, people turn into buyers of my houses, let's just say, houses or commercial properties. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So what I do is I look for all different ways to establish credibility of me and my company and what I do when people come in and meet with me. So my um, house buying, my real estate buying and selling clientele come in, sit down and meet with me or Victoria. Sometimes they'll meet with Christy. Every now and then they'll meet with Courtney now too. We're starting to trust her with that stuff. Um, but when they come in, what is sitting on my desk right there for in plain view for them to see? And that's my real estate book. All right. So some of them will go ahead and buy that book from me just because they're curious. That's number one. Now, are they going to learn everything they need to know about real estate investing from just that book? And the answer is, of course not. Anybody that thinks that that's going to happen is uh, not living in reality. Um, but so some of them will do that. Now, every now and then I'll get uh, people who purchase my book. They are happen to be moving to the area that I'm in or the area that one of my students is in, and they want to do a real estate deal for themselves to move into, and it happens that way. But the, the whole plan of that book and that program there is to keep two things separated. One is my real estate investing training business from my real estate buying and selling business. So I'm, I'm not trying to intermix them, but every now and then it does happen. And it, like I said, it's a credibility builder for it to be sitting there. Um, also, when my um, potential customers go onto my website and see, you know, properties that we have available and what our programs are, they'll see where the television stations doing interviews with me on um, different types of things that I offer up. So, you know, there's the private lending that we offer up. There's the um, real estate buying and selling that we offer up. There's the real estate investing training as a business. There's the real estate um, 
buying a house just one you know one time learning how to buy just one house on much better terms and much cheaper for yourself and that's all you ever want to do with real estate because you have some other uh, path that you like but anyway so um, it's we don't have it designed in such a way if I wanted to write a book about buying and selling houses and or you know that kind of thing how to buy a house properly or cheaper you know I'd write a book specifically for that so if I was hurting for getting buyers and sellers I might go down that road and try to do that but it's a lot easier than what that takes to bring in customers for buying and selling real estate okay I hope that covered that question well enough next question Okay, Chris asked, how is it handled when your buyers, either before or after a deed transfer happens, stop paying? Okay, so if um, the deed has transferred, then there's two directions you can go with that. Oh, well, actually three. Number one is, you know, contact them and just find out if there's some sort of little issue that's caused a problem and, you know, there's a little hiccup and, you know, sometimes they're scared. They're scared to talk to you and they don't know what to do, but all of a sudden uh, something has made it where a, a mistake has happened. Uh, we had, you know, we've had seen things like identity theft happen and a person's bank account wiped out. And a lot of times when that happens, it's a four to six month process for them to get their funds back. You know, uh, doesn't mean they're not earning more funds, but that means that, you know, they got to, you know, kind of fix themselves again and get themselves back on their feet and be able to buy food and whatever. So number one is just communicating with them and finding out um, what happened, what just took place that made it to where they're not paying. Now, the more likely thing is that uh, they're, they're about to move or something's changed. They don't, you know, they're not going to be able to make the payments anymore. And so in that case, the deed is transferred. So now you have option number two, which is Hey guys, I understand you can't, you know, afford the house anymore. Something happened, something's changed. So instead of me having to go down the road of hurting your credit and causing you a lot more expense with attorney fees and all this kind of stuff, how about if we just go back to closing and you just transfer the deed back over to me. It's called a deed in lieu of debt. So you just go to a closing. They might be able to pay for it and you might have to pay for it. But that closing cost, again, it's very minuscule compared to what you're going to make off the house again when you put your new and buyer in place. So that's just a deed in lieu of debt and that saves their credit, that saves the hassle, that saves them a, a huge judgment from chasing them around, all that kind of stuff. All right. And then Choice number three is you're having to go down the road of actually doing a foreclosure on them. And if you're having to go and do that, then it's better for you to get your attorney involved and let them do the, uh, the proper procedures on foreclosing on them. Okay? So there's your answer to that question. Next question. Okay. At the moment, I don't have any more, so just type them in or raise your hand if wow. you have any questions. Nobody's got any questions on the structure of that deal? That, that's amazing. You know, I have hundreds of those on hand right now structured just like that. Some of those are, you know, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of those are, you know, little... Fifty and sixty thousand dollars and everything in between, and so all of them produce lots of cash flow. And so, if you don't have that, you should be asking me questions because I do and I know how to do this and I do it regularly. So, if if you understand it, that's one thing. But going out and really trying to do it, that's a whole other thing. So, if you're not trying, you you're never going to have the questions that you need to get answered so that you can get the roadblocks out of the way and get to the level you want to get to. I'm not trying to make you me, but I'm just saying that I'm right here at your beck and call in these type of Q and A's for you to be able to do this. I, I had a guy a month or so ago who, um, you know, wanted to sign up for Force Your Success and he, he didn't really sign up for it, but he wanted to get started. And so I gave him a little bit of information and uh, he had done 24 deals in the past like year and uh, he signed up with me and uh, but didn't really get started but we let him do you know see just a little bit just so that he could go ahead and do some real deals instead of those I think they were little wholesale deals so they were like worth two or three thousand dollars a piece and that was it um, and and this guy 
had the gall, the nerve to say to me, well, I really didn't learn anything from you. Well, he didn't sign up for the program to get all the information, but he's, he thought up that he, his 24 deals knew, he knew way more than my, you know, over 4,000, closer to 5,000 deals, you know, and it was like, oh my God, they, they just, you just don't understand. Ask the questions. If I had me to ask stuff way back when I was, you know, before I was even a teenager, I would have been in a million times better shape trying to do some of those things. And I probably never would have go down the road of joining the army of all things to get security in my life. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you know, I didn't have the faith that I could do this on a regular basis because my parents only did it to bail themselves out of a bad situation. So they didn't, they never, it never occurred to them to do this as a business. They, they did this to get themselves out of a bad situation, to get the family living back in one house again and to pay off some debt. But then after they made the money off of it, they'd ride, they'd use that money and we'd travel around until they found a job and we'd stay in like Norman Bates style hotel, motels and stuff until they found a job at like, and back in that days, I can remember my dad, you know, getting somewhere between three and four dollars an hour as a, um, as a foreman or a project manager, maybe just a little bit more than that as a project manager on construction sites. And, you know, he would made a whole lot more off his real estate deals than that. Um, but he never had the faith that he could do it on a regular basis. So in turn, as a kid growing up in that, I didn't have the faith or confidence. It took me a little while to put some of my organizational skills together that I developed when I was an officer in the military and then applied it towards my private business of real estate investing. And it's like, oh my God, this is so easy to do. And if I would known all that, I never would have joined service, you know? Um, so take advantage. Okay, Joe, um, Nitya asked, any luck advertising for buyers using Facebook? He's trying to build his buyers list. Yeah, you can do that. Now, there's one thing that i uh, kind of warn you on. Uh, one of my outside sales rep used to have a lot of good luck with Facebook, um, and then I uh, grew her into having her own business, and uh, her and her uh, fiancé, soon to be husband at that time. And so the problem was they did some things that they um, got out of whack or they maybe they, I think it's, it was more of that they, they made a lot of money. And so they made, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and they thought they had just made a million dollars. So their budget, their, their expenses turned into a million dollar expenses with toys and stuff. And so, but they only made a few hundred thousand. And so um, then they kind of got themselves, you know, all screwed up. And then one thing led to another and it kept, it kept, it kept making one mistake after another, which meant that all of a sudden they've got people who can uh, complain about them right there on the social network. And then it, it, they had to shut their sites down. And they, you know, it's was, it was only because they did the wrong thing. Um, if you do the right thing, there's still going to be haters that are going to hate. There's going to be people that are going to jealous of you, and they can communicate right there on that site. So um, we had great luck with doing uh, sales right there when she was working for me. Um, I don't have anybody doing any of my social media, have not on the, on the real estate buying and selling side, haven't needed it. I've built myself in such a way that we've become that local hero, that go-to person that I tell everybody that I want you to do also in your area so that people send us business, send us deals, send us buyers and sellers constantly. We don't know who they are or where they come from, but it's because we built ourselves, established ourselves that way in our area. So that's why it's important to focus like that. But absolutely, you can use um, the social networks, not just, you know, social media, not just Facebook to do that um, and just make sure that you stay on top of it and do the best job you can of making sure that you do everything that you said you were going to do. Just stick to your word and shouldn't have any problems. Okay. Any other questions, Courtney? Um, Nitra was saying that he tried a list of lease purchase homes and it didn't work well. He, he tried other what? Than that, he tried what? A list of lease purchase homes, like what a is, free list. 
no, you, no, don't go after lists like that. That's never going to work. Um, that's somebody trying to sell you something, and if it's even if it's free, there's a way that they're connecting that they're trying to sell you something else, or they're trying to uh, sell off your name to someone else. Um, it, it, that's not the direction that you go. You, you You've got to establish yourself as um, that go-to person in your local area, and then you've got to reach out with your marketing message in different ways that doesn't cost hardly, th some of them are totally free, and there's a few of them that cost just a little bit of money. You don't need to sink a bunch of money in advertising, but bring the people to you, let the people know what it is that you can do for them, and then let the word spread like wildfire fire from there. Um, anyone who goes into the world of thinking the virtual assistant is going to do that for you or a, um, a uh, telemarketing or, or um, uh, a voice, yeah, gosh, well, what the heck's Pat Live? You know, things like Pat Live. Um, God, what is that called? You know, they're just, just a, um, they're an answering service. That's what I'm trying to say. Any type of answering service, you need to have people that work directly with you in the local area where the buyers and sellers uh, live or are trying to live and you have to realize that they're trying to either buy or sell probably the most expensive investment they will ever have made in their life and they're trying to count on you uh, and depend so if you don't even live in that state or that town, you don't know anything about what's a good school district, what's a bad neighborhood, where the new Publix was built, where Walmart's coming, that, that Lowe's just shut down because they built one that's twice the size. And if you don't know any of that stuff, then you're not a local person. If they can't reach out and touch you or your representative in that local area, you're missing out on so many deals. They're completely just passing you by because they're viewing you as probably another scam. So, uh, but buying a list of lease purchase, I would, I would never in a million years go down that road. Not picking on you, I'm just saying that somebody's giving you some bad advice on what to do. All right, any other questions there, Courtney? Okay, um, Lee asked, what is the first question I would ask of a seller who called me? That would get the seller to think seller financing other than cash. Okay, wait a minute. Say that. Say that question again. Okay, what is the first question I would ask of a seller who called me that would get the seller to think seller financing dot 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 other than cash? You, you don't do it that Lee, way. You might Lee. want to word that differently. Yeah, Lee, you got you got that out of what even Courtney, who's just getting started, understands that you would never communicate with a seller that way. Um, the, the best thing I'll tell you, Lee, when you come, I'll help you a little bit more with that, but um, follow the script that I've already given you. Um, you you're, not, you're not going down the road that, that way. You're not having that kind of conversation with that seller. Okay? Um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make them realize that you are a, able to market their house way better than most people can. You want to make them realize that you have a large buyer's list that doesn't take but a couple of weeks to build for the local area of where that house is located. And so, and then you want to make them realize that they, it's going to cost them nothing to deal with you and you're going to try to do something with their property for them within 90, you know, in a short period of time, 90 days or less. And uh, then once you start building that relationship with them, then you can look at based on what your buyer's list has sold, once that market has spoken to you, what they've said, not sold, but said, what that, that market has spoken to you, then you know what kind of um, structured situation based on what the seller's deal is, whether they have a debt or no debt or partial debt or, or what, so that you can solve the problem on the seller side with the way that you structure the deal and have it set up to where the buyer is being taken care of as well while you are making a fair profit. So um, it, you, you're just not going down the road of asking them a question that takes them down the road of seller financing right away. Okay. All right. Any other questions on there, Courtney? Yes. Chris asked, are you setting these up with an LLC? 
yes, you can do each one of uh, your houses separately in an LLC, or you can figure out a dollar figure or a uh, total number of house deals that you want to put into one LLC. You want to take your personal property, put that into a separate LLC, and then some entity structuring attorneys will suggest that you wrap the entire process with another LLC around that. Now, that gets a little bit um, overwhelming and complicated. Also, if you're doing any commercial, each one of your commercial deals, if they're you know much more valuable, can be a separate LLC by themselves. But um, you can do it that way. You can incorporate, um, you know, in the very beginning, you, you don't want to build this huge fortress to protect um, your um, everything that you own when you don't have anything built yet, you know, because you spent a lot of money. But once you've uh, built an empire, then it's time to put a fortress around it to protect it. So after me saying all of that, I still have to say this last thing that you need to make sure that you're getting with your entity structuring attorney to see what they would recommend that you do. So again, I'm not replacing what your attorney would tell you. Okay, next question. Okay, at the moment I don't have any more, so just either okay. type them in or raise your hand. Okay, um, so here's here's what I uh, want to do. I want to go ahead and uh, we'll cut this short unless somebody pops up with a question here. Um, listen, guys, last thing I'm going to say to you is there's a lot of changes happening. There's a political, and I called it a circus today on the social media, there's a political um, just let's all chase each other and let's all um, try to fight with each other and let's all try to get the media to make each one of us uh, more popular or w more well-known based on what we say and what we do. Um, remember, there's a lot of publicity stunts that are going on out there right this minute. Um, it, there's also, you know, I don't care whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or something else, it doesn't matter. Uh, one side is always trying to make the other side look bad, but in in today's political arena, arena, it looks like that one side to me doesn't have a whole lot of hope that they can win in four years. So the only technique that it looks like that they're reaching out at, at is to try to slow down, hamper, mix up, confuse, and cause mass hysteria out there against the other side. Because if the other side really does accomplish one-tenth of what they said they could do, if they really do do that, there's no way the other side could ever win again if for, for a dec decades. Um, so they have to do something. My way, my point in saying that is not to make a political statement, it's to make you realize there's a lot of changes going on and there's a lot of opportunities sitting there. So don't get hung up uh, or wrapped around the axle of he said, she said, they said, they're doing that, they're doing that. Look at the business side of this. There's a lot of changes and every one of those opportunity lies in there. Remember, I always say real estate is a move, to make money from real estate is always a moving target. That moving target moves around for me, and I look at it, and I watch it, and I follow it, but it's very easy to strike gold over and over and over again if you stay focused and you understand real estate investing and you follow the things that I do. Okay, if there's no other questions, Courtney? I have one more. Okay. Chris asked to he asked, but your basic company is an LLC, correct? You can, yes, that would be the wrap that I was telling you about. You can put the company into an LLC, but then you should, so, um, so think about this, Chris. Let's say you have 50 properties, and all of them are in that one LLC, and uh, picture that LLC as, a, as this great big bubble. So all of those houses, those properties are all inside of that one bubble. So everything will bounce around inside of that bubble. So let's say property number seven, um, something goes wrong where somebody tries to sue you. All right. So property number seven is fair game, and so are the other uh, 43 properties inside that bubble. But if you take, um, and, and let's say you make a, a separate LSE, so we're going to call it a separate bubble for every five properties. We'll just make a number of five. 
So you got five properties. Okay, property one through five is in this bubble. Property six through 10 is in this bubble. Property 11 through and on up, it's separate bubbles. So now something happens in one through five's bubble. The only thing that it can affect is property one through five. It can't affect property six through 10. So those are separate. So um, those kind of lawsuit situations like that only bounce around and stay within the boundaries of that one bubble. So that's the purpose of taking some of them and put them in one, some of them put them in another, and, and so forth and so on. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, like I said, I'm not an entity structuring attorney. I understand that stuff at a, at a very um, elementary level. It makes sense to me, and I understand it well enough to be able to explain what I just did. But that, that entity structuring attorney is where you need to seek, you know, more powerful and deeper advice and you know help with um, the you know, how far you want to go with that it's remember it's going to depend on how big you build that empire of yours um, if you're building an empire of 10 houses and you're making you know six grand a month while you're sitting at, at on the beach at st thomas plus you're making all of your down payment money and you got um pay increases built right into just those 10 houses and then on the back end you've got you know hundreds of thousands of dollars coming out of that and that's all you need it's 10 properties how many llc's do you really need to build for that and so the answer would be um, the advice that your entity structuring attorney gives you okay all right is that it for the questions that is it okay guys. for those of you who are interested in making a difference in your life and others lives with through real estate investing it couldn't be better and I've said that before with different things that happen but it just keeps getting better and better and better and the more I understand and the more I adjust to what's going on in the economy whatever that economy is I uh, am able to recall or remind myself things that I heard when I was a kid things that I did in the past that are true again today that solve problems that a lot of people don't even realize are possible so if you want to make a difference for you, you want to make a difference for others that you work with, you want to make a difference for others that are affected by your income and the things that you're able to do, then sign up for Jumpstart. Now, if you uh, want to just go ahead and get this on the fast track and move a lot quicker and easier and smoother, then obviously sign up for the force your success i know force your success costs a lot more but it is well worth the price if i had someone willing to work with me way way back in my life the way that i work with people through force your success then i would have done it a million times over i'm just telling you i know the difference whether you're doing it or not doing it and i know the value of it now there's work that comes along with this yes it's a four-letter word i don't want you to think that you don't have something to do and i'm going to do everything for you because that's not true but the bottom line is if you focus you will be extremely happy with the results that you can get out of this if you'll just uh, come along with me and focus so make your choice force your success or jumpstart to get started and if you do for success jumpstart comes with it as a bonus all right have a good day now bye